Tonight, we begin the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. I enjoy preparing for Yom Kippur each year, a time for self-reflection, thinking about the services and logistics. Okay, maybe this year was a little much, but and toying with different sermon topics to share with you. I allow my mind to wander, embracing all the aspects of the high holidays. And this year, and the year-to-year -year changes come into focus because of all the events that occurred from last Yom Kippur till today. Often, many thoughts come as a jumble. Sorting them clarifies what the focus of the holiday this year will mean to me. This year, a singular thought permeated my reflections for a long time, which was, what is atonement? What does the namesake of this day really mean in a Jewish context? So I started simply. I looked it up in the dictionary in my office that I keep on the shelf. And it read, and this is a Webster College dictionary, obsolete, this is the first definition, obsolete, Reconciliation, okay. And then I looked at the second definition, which I'm not going to quote for you, which was basically a statement of a fundamental principle of the Christian faith, of, which uh, definitely does not apply. Webster may think that that's clear, but for a word that governs so much in how we act and what we say and how our soul relates to God, this was a very unsatisfactory set of definitions. I needed to understand what do we as Jews mean when we say atonement. To figure this out, I thought maybe I need to step back and instead of looking at it from the English, instead look at it from the Hebrew and see, the see if defining kippul can send, could shed a deeper light on its meaning. So I looked at the meaning of the Hebrew word Kippur, kaf, pe, resh. And the definitions for kaf, pe, resh were diverse and plentiful. A kfar can mean a village. Kapar can mean to deny a truth. There's a word using the same root that means frost or ransom or tar or pith. And while those definitions are interesting, none apply to our holiday. However, there is an applicable meaning. The verb, the PL and the PUA, kiper kupel. This word means to grant atonement or to forgive in the active form, kipel, or to be atoned or to be forgiven in the passive form, kuper. The action noun of kipel is kipul. Thus today, yom kipul can mean the day of atonement or the day of forgiveness. So we can substitute forgiveness for atonement. Does that mean to Jews atonement equates to forgiveness, either to seek it or give it? It still didn't feel sufficient for such a holy day. It seems too simplistic. Forgiveness to me feels almost too common of a word for a day of such reverence. If my spirit, my soul, my connection with Adonai is seeking atonement, I feel I need, I need to truly understand its meaning to carry me through the holiday. While simple definitions help pave a road, I realized I needed to delve deeper. So I began to reflect on ritual. There's a pre-Yom Kippur custom known as shlugging kaporis in Yiddish whereby an individual takes a chicken, or as suggested by many rabbis, including your own, um, as a more humane alternative today, money, and swinging it over your head while reciting a special liturgy. This action transfers one's sins to the swung item, which is then given to charity. When this was practiced in the shtetls of Poland and the corners of Brooklyn, the chickens would be given to the poor, to ensure that they were able to have a hearty meal before the fast. The Hebrew word kaporet, which is the Sephardic modern Hebrew pronunciation of kaporis, 
is the plural of kapara, which is translated as penance, atonement, forgiveness, and absolution. More synonyms to atonement, but still no clearer meaning. So how do we find these ideas in a Jewish context? For me, the power is in understanding how the absolution, the atonement, the forgiveness is achieved. The action behind the word. Let's return to Schlugging Kaporis. In this ritual, we symbolically transfer our sins to the chicken or money. That's the easy part. But then we use that item to help those that need. We take action and don't allow our sins to exist as a burden, but rather as action for the sake of others. This is how we allow for absolution. We change our sins into good works. In Judaism, being sorry is not enough. We need to do more. We must try to repair the harm we have done. That is why we speak in our liturgy of God's compassion. It's not a realistic expectation to think that we can right all of our wrongs. Nonetheless, we should strive to get as close as possible, not just by apologizing, but by trying to bring good to the world. This is the meaning of atoning. To reconcile, to make peace with those that, were, that we wronged. Now that atonement has, now that, now that atonement has a Jewish meaning, I want to apply it. Yom Kippur absolves us of sin between us and God, not for the wrongs we have done to each other, a concept I think that we all often forget. Sitting in shul, praying, beating our chests is not enough. We need to seek out atonement from those we wronged. A reconciliation does not mean that everything is as it was before. It means that agreement was made to restore harmony. Forgiving does not mean forgetting. To forgive and likewise to atone is achieved by talking with each other and more importantly, listening. The act of listening, especially the feelings and reactions about what we did wrong is challenging as is admitting our own shortcomings and mistakes. But these two acts together allow for reconciliation. It allows us to work through pain and hurt and end the vicious cycle of violence and resentment. We cannot force someone to forgive us, but we can strive to atone for what we've done. My hope for us this Yom Kippur is that just as we ask God to grant us atonement as we fast, beat our chests and admit our shortcomings, that we are able to face each other, admit our wrongdoings, express our feelings, our disappointments, our pain, and to listen to one another. And then grant atonement to those that seek it we can do that, we'll be one step closer to having God manifest in our world. Kamal Khatima Tovah.